And the first step again, turn everything off, except curves and the show menu again. And I got everything set up the way that I want. And I'm just gonna start frame one just by hitting S. I'm just gonna key the whole character head to toe. Now with a character like this, there's a ton of controls that ideally I should hide. There's so much stuff here. I'm just not gonna care, right? There's things that I'm not gonna use. So ideally, if there was a way to hide that, I would spend the time and set that up and be like, I don't want that as a headache to have to, to deal with all this extra data being keyed for no reason, but I'm just gonna work with it and see how it goes. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by looking at the, the formula. So we go look at the reference. So you're gonna start with the contact pose. There we go. So you're gonna start with the right foot and I'm just gonna move that foot out in front, move this foot out back. And what you'll see right away is when you start to create that sort of balanced A-frame is the feet won't reach because the hip is too high, right? Because we've started with the T-pose with the feet together. So I need to drop the hip. So I'm going to drop it down quite far. And you'll see that now that the feet are flat on the ground, I can start to figure out, okay, well, this foot, it should be on the ball of the foot. It shouldn't be flat on the heel. So I need to figure out, okay, how am I going to do that? So depending on the rig, I have to go find the right channel and then go and grab it and say, okay, I'm going to pose that. So there, and then this foot, I need that to be lifting up on the heel. So I'm going to use foot roll there and I'm going to get that. Then I can go and adjust the hip until I see, you know, the legs are kind of, you know, slight bend in the knee. You always want to have a little bend in the knee as much as possible to avoid knees popping straight all of a sudden. And here, what I might do is, well, maybe I need to use a little bit more. Maybe I need to roll on the ball of the foot a little bit more there. And you can see as you do this, it does change the knee, which makes the upper leg feel closer. So sometimes when you make these adjustments, um, you may find, oh, I got to go and adjust the foot position and make sure that everything's looking okay from a front view as well as a side view. Now, typically, again, what I would start with here, I got to find the right control. Is it this one? Yeah. So I want the hip, right? It needs to turn away from the leading foot. How much? It's really just up to you. It's eyeball, right? It's, it's not going to be 90 degrees and it's not going to be zero. So somewhere in there, you're going to find a sweet spot. And it's probably closer to like, you know, maybe 25, 30 degrees, something like that. Maybe even less um, where I need to just twist the hip, right? The hip needs to turn away. And if it's hard to see, uh, turn on wireframe. So you can see what happens when you move this. You can actually see, okay, I can actually see the twisting now. It makes more sense, right? So I've got this rotation happening in the hip. And then as well, you can see when I do that, you can see what happens to the legs. If this is at zero, right? The legs won't have as much give. So if I rotate this a little bit more, it slackens the legs. So they are more bent, which again means I can go back to the hip and I can lift it up, okay? As a general rule, I prefer to not give the characters a very broad stride, right? Because if the pyramid, right, if the A-frame is really wide, that means the hip is really low, it feels like a crouch. So then here I would go and say, you know, that feels a little better. From the front view, what I don't like is that the legs don't seem to be under the body. If you look at human beings actually walking, our legs don't come down straight and parallel to the vertical they cut in towards the center so they can support the weight better, right? So there, it's basically like walking on a tightrope. Your legs, right, your feet where they land um, will be under the body as opposed to coming straight down. The legs taper in. So I'm going to work with the leg that's in front, and I'm just going to move it forward just like that and say, okay, maybe, maybe that works. And I'll look at the X value. See that? Let's just call it eight. And then I'll just do the same thing on the other side, but... My guess is that sometimes if you just type in the number, it may not work exactly depending on how it's zeroed. See how that doesn't quite work? It's not exactly zeroed. So I'll go to both of these and say, what happens if I zero X out? And see that, okay. <clears throat> Obviously, if I zero them both out, they don't go to the same position, right? If I zero this out, Right, so there's a little bit of a difference there with the rig. So this is, I'm a little worried about, did I move anything off the center? Now do that. And then that, and that looks better. That looks like it's pretty close. Let me nudge that in there. Okay, 
All right, so I've got my leg pose in the side view looking all right. I've got the heel up on the back leg, the toe and ball up on the front leg. I've moved the legs under the center and I've added the little hip twist so that now the hip is turning a little that way. Okay, so that's what I want you all to do with your rig. So I have my, my contact pose and I've grabbed the whole character and I've keyed it, right? So the whole thing is, is locked in. Um, for this um, scene, we don't need 200 frames. We just need 25, right? And 25 is gonna be exactly the same as frame one. So as you go and make more edits, you're going to have to go and every once in a while remind yourself, oh, right, frame one, if I want this to loop, I have to make sure I copy frame one over to 25 and key it in, right? So that one and 25 are gonna be the same. And as I change it and add more detail, like the arms and other stuff, I'll have to go and, and update that.